that is the tip. If someone comes up to me and says, Ellie, what is the number one tip that you can give me right now that will ensure that I will pass the board exam? It is this tip. Hey, it's Ellie, and welcome back to my channel. Thank you to my sister Rachel for sponsoring today's cup of joe. She's actually with me right now. Say hi to the people, Rachel. Hi, people. So as you guys can tell from the title of this video, I will be talking about all the things that I wish I knew before taking the nursing board exam. But before that, how are you guys? Please let me know. Please comment down what's going on in your life right now. Where are you at? Are you still in school? Are you in college? Are you graduated? What are you doing? <laughs> so the last video that I posted was a vlog showing you guys days of my life, the new nurse's oath taking, I showed you guys the ceremony and everything that went down. And it's been a couple of weeks. But I'm back with a new video for you guys that hopefully will help you, especially for those who are preparing for the board exam this May and November. Also, life update, my best friend Bianca, she is the first person that I became friends with in nursing school, in college, and she has stuck with me all throughout up until the nursing board exam and the oath taking. She is now officially in the States. She just moved yesterday. She took a plane to the States by herself yesterday to pursue her nursing journey further and I couldn't be more proud but I'm also kind of sad it's really hard to see you know everyone who was once so active in your life taking their own path their own journey because now we're in the season and era of adulting everyone's working they're moving they're doing so many things and I'm just so proud of everyone and I guess the reason why I'm saying this is because I know a lot of you guys have similar dreams you know to work abroad whether it's in the states the UK I don't know where you want to go but if you have a similar dream then I'm here to tell you guys that it is possible it's very 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 much possible to reach that dream of yours because my best friend is doing it right now anyways let's get along with the video I have my trusty iPad here and also these are stickers that Bianca gave me I just kind of position them there they're not actually stuck on my ipad but the first thing the first thing that i wish i knew before taking the board exam is that the roller coaster of emotions is completely normal now my number one tip when it comes to things about feelings and emotions is that you always need to feel out whatever it is you're feeling you have to let that emotion happen so if you're feeling happy jump for joy if you're feeling sad Cry it out, or if you're feeling tired, then take a nap. Do whatever you need to do to feel those feelings, but, and this is the most important part, you need to keep moving forward. I actually made a video diary compilation for when I prepared for the board exams, and I showed you guys everything. And I mean everything. I showed you guys every thought, every feeling, everything that I did during the board exam. And let me tell you guys, it wasn't all pretty. I mean, in one clip, you'll see me crying and breaking down because of frustration. And then in the next clip, you'll see me all excited and happy and motivated to study. It was really messy and it was all over the place, but I did make that video to show you guys that it's all just a part of this process. I want you to know that everything that you are feeling or that you will feel is completely valid, but you do have a choice to not let your feelings or emotions get in the way of your goals. And so I hope and I pray that you will not allow your feelings or emotions to get in the way because you are so close. You have no idea, you are so close to your goals. So please feel whatever it is that needs to be felt, but always remember to keep pushing forward. All right, so the second thing that I wish I knew is that my environment heavily affects the way that I study and work. A clean space is a clean mind and a messy space is a messy mind and I completely live by those words. Now, I'm not saying that I'm completely 100% organized all the time, I'm not, and there were definitely days while I was preparing for the board exam where my room, my environment was just a complete mess. And it definitely affected the way that I thought and acted. How can you think clearly in a messy space? You can't. So let me be the one to tell you that your feelings are already gonna get messy. You don't need your environment to be messy as well. So my tip for you is to always keep your designated study area clean. It does not matter where you are. You may be in your room, 
in your study room, in the dining room, or in a cafe, you need to make sure that before you even start studying, before you even open up that textbook or your notes or reviewers, that your area is in study mode. What's that mean? It needs to be clear. There has to be no mess. There has to be no distractions. Now, a tip that I have for you when it comes to distractions, especially our phones, because it is our number one distraction, is to record a time lapse of yourself studying. Why? Because number one, it makes our phone inaccessible to use when we're recording. We can't just scroll through TikTok or Instagram. And number two, it helps us become accountable of our actions because naturally, when we see a camera, when there's a camera in front of us, or when we know that we're being recorded, we are more aware of our actions. Therefore, we will be able to focus on the task that is at hand, which is to study. Okay, the third thing that I wish I knew is that review centers make the review hard on purpose. Review centers make the review so hard and so challenging, but it is for our own good. I remember the first week of my review sessions, we were studying psychiatric nursing and I was so proud of myself because I understood everything that the professor was saying. I was taking down notes. I even made a quizlet and memorized everything. But when the post test came, my score, we don't talk about Bruno. We don't talk about Bruno Because it was so low I was like, what? Nothing that the professor talked about was on that quiz Nothing And everyone was so dumbfounded because I think a majority of us did not pass that quiz We were like, why is my score like this? And I think the professors kind of noticed that we were all shocked with our scores That they had to tell us that guys, we really do make the quizzes challenging for you guys because we want you to be exposed to hard questions and challenging questions so that by the time that the board exam comes, you're already used to that kind of level of critical thinking. And so when I thought about it, I was like, oh yeah, that does make sense. But it does suck to see that my score was that low. So if you're currently in a review center or if you plan on enrolling in one in the future, I need you to know that if you're gonna take a pre-test, post-test, pre-board examination, Please don't take it too hard and please don't be too hard on yourself if you get a low score because as long as you know that you really honestly did your best to answer those questions, okay? If you weren't just guessing, if you weren't just picking C because you don't know, or if you weren't just doing eeny, meeny, miny, mo on the answers. If you were actually trying to understand the question and you were actually trying to analyze the options, you should be very, very proud of yourself for taking the quiz that way. And I know it sounds super cliche like, oh, as long as you did your best, but I'm serious because let me tell you, the board exam is one big critical thinking game. It is not enough to just know things or memorize information because these questions can be very, very tricky. So it's important for you to exercise your critical thinking. That's why I'm telling you guys, as long as you did your best and you actually tried to think critically while taking these exams, you should be very, very proud of yourself because that is what you need to do on the actual day of the board exam, okay? You need to have this big thinking cap on. You need to be thinking like Nancy, Drew, Sherlock, and Enola Holmes kind of level, okay? So please don't be too hard on yourself and always, always try your best. Number four, I wish I knew that Facebook groups are actually very helpful. Okay, so I'm not a big Facebook girly. I never was. I'm not the kind of person who just like casually scrolls on Facebook. It's just not my thing. I'm more of an Instagram, TikTok kind of person. But there was a point in time while I was preparing where I just got so paranoid and so anxious. I was just trying to search up things on the internet to see if you know people were feeling the same way, what are people doing when it comes to the nursing board exam. I need to know because there might be some updates and I might be able to get an idea on either Facebook or Twitter. So I went on Facebook and I searched up nursing board exam and the first thing that showed up was this Facebook group and the name of it, hold on. The name of the group is NLE Review PRC nursing board exam review. So I was like, you know what? Let me just join. And when I did, oh my goodness, it was a gold mine. Like people were literally posting free notes, free reviewers, video recommendations, and even announcements about the PRC, like when it comes to the application and the processing, what's allowed, what's not allowed. And let me tell you guys, if I didn't join that group, I would be so unaware of so many things. I'm not even joking you. I will link that group down below. 
There are also some groups that are dedicated to posting practice questions. So they would post a practice question and then everyone would like comment their answer and the rationales. Personally, I learned that Facebook groups aren't only good for gaining information for your advantage, but they're also it's just such a wholesome thing. I mean, these are literal communities of nursing students helping each other out for the board exam. I mean, no one's afraid to ask questions because everyone's curious. Everyone has so many questions and they aren't afraid to ask. And there's also so many people who are responding and giving their insights and giving their tips and telling them what should be done and what shouldn't be done. It's amazing to see a whole community just come together and help each other out. So yeah, please join Facebook groups. They're actually very, very helpful when it comes to this kind of thing. Number five is I wish that I knew that practice questions are the best form of studying. It is the best form of studying and I wish I knew this when I was in like first year college. The rest of my nursing journey would have been a breeze. It would have been a breeze, honestly, because I didn't focus on test taking and like critical thinking until the board exam. And that was a mistake. I mean, like I said earlier, the board exam is one big critical thinking game. And you can actually, guys, listen, your brain is an organ that you can actually train and condition to be stronger. You can actually exercise your brain to think more critically, to identify problems, to come up with solutions. You can actually exercise your brain into doing better. And the way you do it, the way that you can do that for the board exam is by practicing nursing questions. And so I have a list of a couple of resources that I use to practice. So it's Nurses Labs, RNpedia, Registered Nurse RN, and also Quizlet. So for Quizlet, basically, if I have a certain topic that I want to test myself on, you just search up that topic, let's say hypertension, and then Quizlet. There will be a link that will have questions regarding whatever topic you search up. Oh, also, it's very important to understand the rationale. So when you take practice questions, most likely there will be a rationale for the correct answer. It's an explanation as to why that answer is correct. There are some resources that will give you the rationale for both the right answer and the wrong answer and I suggest that you read all of it. Read all of it because knowing the explanation or the thought process behind an answer is better than just knowing the answer itself because you can use that information, you can use that knowledge to answer other questions if you're picking up what I'm putting down. So practice your nursing questions and read the rationales, please. That is the tip. If someone comes up to me and says, Ellie, what is the number one tip that you can give me right now that will ensure that I will pass the board exam? It is this tip. It is to practice nursing questions every day, every day, all the time, read and understand the rationales as well. Number six, I'm gonna need you guys to buckle up, strap it on, because this is a complicated one. Test taking strategies are your best friend, okay? Now you're like, test taking strategies, what? I didn't know they existed, okay? Before I was even studying for the board exam, I had no idea what test taking strategies were. I just thought, hey, let me just review, memorize as much as I can, take the test and hope for the best. But no, there are so many strategies that you can use that will make taking this exam so much easier. Okay, test taking strategies can help you eliminate wrong answers and help bring you closer to the right answer. They are so powerful. And if you guys practice this while practicing your nursing questions, you're set. You are set. I could honestly make a whole video about this because the explanation and the process behind it is kind of hard to explain, okay? But let me give you guys a couple of tips that I can right now. Okay, what I wanna focus on right now when it comes to test taking is priority questions. Now, what is a priority question? These are the nursing questions that have words such as first, best, most, or initial. Usually you'll see a sentence like, what is the most important action? What is the best action? What is the best response? What is the initial action that the nurse should take? If you see those words, what they're looking for is a priority. Out of those options, which one should be the first that the nurse should do, okay? That's how you identify a priority question. Now, there are three strategies that you can use when you're answering a priority question. The ABCs, Maslow's Hierarchy of Needs, or the nursing process. If I explain everything here, it's gonna be a really long and complicated video, but they are super helpful when it comes to the board exam. So 
do your research or again if you want me to make a whole nother video about that just comment down and I will do my best to explain okay so number seven the seventh thing that I wish I knew is that study walls are very very powerful now I did make a video showing you guys all of the notes that I posted up in my room. So if you guys want to see that, I will link that down below as well. But to be honest, I started my study wall pretty late. I think it was like one, one and a half months before the exam. And that is way too late, okay? You should be making your study wall the minute that you start reviewing for the board exam. You should have this prepared already because let me tell you, especially if you're a visual learner, this can help you so much, okay? So basically, while I was preparing for the board exam, I had this routine with my study wall. I would wake up, first thing in the morning, I would read each and every single piece of paper on my wall. I would read it, not just scan it, I would read it out loud. I'm a visual and auditory learner, so I like seeing things, saying them out loud or hearing them. So first thing in the morning, I would do that. And before I go to bed, I would do the same thing. I would do this twice in a day, or whenever I have like spare time or I catch myself kind of like staring into space, I would turn my direction to the nursing notes wall and I would read every single page of notes. And that helped me so much. You have no idea that saved my life because on the board exam, there were topics that were on my wall that showed up on the exam. I literally closed my eyes and envisioned my room while I was taking the exam and tried to pick out, oh, I, I know this. I know this topic. I have a piece of paper with notes all about that. Let me just take my photographic memory and remember what I wrote on that wall. And it worked, okay? It worked. Although you do really need to have a strong photographic memory, trust me, if you're a visual learner, this just might save your life. And this just might be the tip that will help you pass the board exam. Number eight is that mindset is everything. It is everything. Thing. There was this point in time when I was preparing for the board exam where I was just so overwhelmed, okay? I was so scared. I was breaking down because I was frustrated. I was anxious. I was scared. I was overwhelmed because I was like, oh my gosh, this exam, it's too much. Like the preparation, I can't handle it. This is literally the most important exam. I can't mess it up. Everyone's watching. The feeling, it was so, so heavy. But what I realized is that the nursing board exam is only made up of 500 questions, okay? So there's NP1, 2, 3, 4, 5 with 100 questions each. So that's 500 questions. And I realized I've taken so many exams in my life, like since grade school to high school to senior high to college, I'm pretty sure I've taken more than 500 questions worth of exams. So what's another 500, right? Like that's that's how I saw it. I was like, you know, you know what, Alicia? What's another 500 questions? Okay, just treat it like any other exam. Study and do your best. Okay, don't be don't be acting like it's this giant monster that's coming out to get you because it's not. If you just look at it from a different perspective, you'll realize that it's just another exam. Calm down and do your best. So that just really helped me kind of scale it down to a smaller picture, a smaller perspective, one that is less frightening, one that kind of doesn't give me spikes of anxiety, and one that doesn't make me feel overwhelmed. So if you guys are that kind of person too, where you appreciate perspective, then try to think of it that way so that you're not scared. If you're positive when it comes to your thinking and your mindset, your actions will follow through. I'm very passionate about that. So remember, mindset, it's everything. Number nine is that I wish I knew that it's very important to have a support system, especially when you're preparing for the board exam. It is so important. I don't think anyone on this earth can possibly say, or like honestly tell themselves that they got to where they are all because of themselves. No, because there are certain people in your life that help you or motivate you or encourage you or believe in you. All of those people are what make up your support systems and they're the ones that are going to get you to where you need to be. So that's what I realized is that without my family, especially my little sister who's here right now, without her, I would have not been able to pass a board exam. She was super helpful and I could go into the details of how my sister motivated me and encouraged me to do my best because she was literally my number one, my number one support system, my sister and also my very special someone. Shout out to you, shout out to you too because without you guys and without my family, without my mom and dad constantly telling me that I can do it and, and without you guys, without my viewers and the people who comment on my videos and send me messages on Instagram telling me that I can do it, 
Without you guys, I would not be here. I would not be a registered nurse and I couldn't be more thankful. So if you're getting ready for the board exam, please identify your support systems and please appreciate them, appreciate their presence and appreciate what they bring into your life because they are the people that will help you overcome everything and reach your goals. Okay, you guys, my camera is literally about to die and we're already on the last thing. So the 10th and last thing that I wish I knew before taking the board exam is that we are never truly alone. And it's actually kind of funny because I realized this literally two days before the board exam is that I was never alone in this journey. I was here thinking that, oh my gosh, I'm just going through so much. I'm feeling so much frustration and anxiety and fear and everything's just so overwhelming. It's so heavy. But... Guys, how many thousands of people are always taking the board exam? Every single year in May and in November, thousands and thousands of people are taking this exam and they're on the same exact journey that you and I are on. We are never alone. We are never truly alone because I'm pretty sure everyone else feels the same way. Okay, I had to switch to my phone, but my phone is also a low battery. But anyways, what I'm saying is, you guys, we're all in this together. We're all in this together Once we know that we are We're all stars and we see that Anyways, you get the gist, you guys Can we just take a look at the number? Rachel, can you search up right now How many people took the board exam last November 2022? 24,900 20, Almost 25,000 people And that was only in November 2022 How many board exams have gone by? Right? And that was already 25,000 people. I was on the same journey as 25,000 other people. How can I say that I'm alone? I'm not. And a thousand of you will take the same exam this coming May and next November and so on so forth because you're never gonna be alone, okay? Nursing students, we're never gonna be alone. We're all in this journey together. And you need to be able to understand that and kind of bury that deep into your heart, especially when the times get tough, when you're feeling like you can't go any further, when you feel like you can't do it anymore, you need to remember that somewhere out there, thousands of people are feeling the same exact way that you are right now. So please remember that you are never, ever truly alone in this journey. So that does it for the 10 things that I wish I knew before taking the nursing board exam. I hope you guys like this video and if you guys want to see more, please comment down below any kind of suggestions. I love reading your comments and if you guys like this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up, subscribe, hit that notification bell. Oh my gosh, did I already forget my outro? Has it been that long? I'm Ellie and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!